you know, I think I mentioned in the past that um, in this society, what they try to do with the so-called black man is they try to uh, they try to limit his options for expression by filtering everything through entertainment. And what I mean by that is in this society, they set up athletes for the so-called black race. They set up athletes and entertainers as leaders. And they're supposed to be our ambassadors to the leaders of the other races, right? But you, you, if you notice, if you pay attention, amongst the other races, they have diplomats and dignitaries and elected officials and notable people. And almost none of them are, are entertainers. You know why? Because they keep those two things separate. But with so-called black people, especially with the so-called black male... All of our notable figures and representatives are supposed to be singers, actors, dancers, and athletes. And you're going to see this dude here, Stephen, Stephen A. Smith. Uh, he's another dude who's simple-minded but tries to act like he, like he knows what's going on in society. You're going to see him pretty much extol that method of having athletes as ambassadors. And he's going to put them on a pedestal. And it's going to show you why our people are in the condition that they're in right now. When noted comedian and host of the hit show Family Feud, Steve Harvey, exited from a meeting with President-elect Donald Trump last week, calling him, quote, a great man, end quote, to say there was a backlash would be a gross understatement. The word cool and sellout was immediately thrown out. His friend and contemporary D.L. Hughley wasn't happy either, aiming his vitriol at Trump instead of Steve Harvey. And of course, it provided the perfect excuse for naysayers to accuse sports greats like Jim Brown and Ray Lewis of being used as photo ops weeks ago. But on a day like today, when we celebrate the birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Martin Luther King Jr., who was a pawn, who was a pawn of the elite, so-called elite, uh, his, 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 uh, his guru was a Caucasian Jewish man named Stanley Levinson. Right, that whole thing was controlled. That whole civil rights movement was controlled, and Martin Luther King was controlled. And when they were done, with, real name Michael King, and when they were done with him, they put a bullet in his head. But to this day, they use Martin Luther King as a control mechanism for black people because black people in mass are under mind control, and like any mind control slave, when they start to come out of the out of the control, you have to have little triggers to get them back in line. And one of the main triggers that, that, that mainstream society uses on blacks is Martin Luther King. All right. That's why on a day like today, they always have a bunch of athletes get on TV and talk about the impact that Martin Luther King Jr. made. But anyway. Along with this undeniable historical impact, perhaps it's time for all of us to see the big picture. To essentially pay more attention to the issues permeating our society. What it'll take to resolve them and connecting ourselves to who we ultimately can hold accountable rather than focusing on disdain for that very individual in a position to make a difference. Now, mind you, Stephen A. Smith is not a politician. He's not a pundit. He's not a uh, expert in any field other than shit talking. Excuse my language. He's he's that dude that you see in a barbershop that that, you know, he could tell you everything about basketball. All right, but he can't play. But now he's parlayed his ability to use multisyllabic words when talking about sports into talking about politics. All right, that's a hobby for him because, as he says, he's a proud capitalist, meaning he worships money. But he's really just symptomatic of what I what I'm speaking about. They take black athletes and black entertainers and they put them in front of a camera and make you think that. When they speak about real issues that what they have to say is viable and it's not there's no viability to what he's saying because he doesn't have the ability to comprehend how to solve our problems because the problems that so-called black people have are spiritual they're not they're not economic difference knowing that's not about to get us anywhere has anyone thought about what impact it could have if trump spoke to lebron james how about steph curry how about mike tomlin tony dungy chris paul Adam Jones of the Baltimore Orioles, or a host of conscientious sports figures connected to communities, committed to helping inner cities ascend from an abyss that has plagued us for decades. Well, if the abyss has plagued us for decades, then why did you just say that Martin Luther King had a great impact for? What really did he do if the abyss is still plaguing us? 
and let me get this straight because because somebody can dribble a basketball or wear or wear a headset over his head and call plays in football that makes them a um, a viable candidate to go speak to the president of the United States and then you wonder why they only view the black man as a as an entertainer and a minstrel uh, that's what I mean when I say this dude he doesn't even understand what he's saying what then will they be sellouts too just for meeting with the man no, not sellouts, just, just simpletons. For expressing their concerns? For articulating what ails these communities and providing ideas on how to resolve problems? The answer would be no, at least for anyone with sense. So here's hoping Trump calls all those guys and then some. So why have a problem with Steve Harvey? And this will be the same Negro. Just to show you how black people are such respecters of persons, meaning, meaning they... Um, they look at people who are in prominent positions and they hold them in higher esteem than they do regular people. Uh, this dude actually thinks that because somebody is a professional athlete, that they should go meet with the president and offer ideas for helping the so-called black community. But if an average black man was to give the, uh, his ideas for what can help the so-called black community, you know what a, a guy like this would say? He'd say, who the hell are you to talk? That's the number one problem is the respect of persons mentality that's in the so-called black community. These people, they, they, all they do is they, they take people on television and they put them on a pedestal just because they're on TV. While few of us are interested in helping and hearing praise for Trump at this moment, let's not confuse that with recognizing the position he's in, respecting it, and using our intellect to decipher where we go from here. No. Do please. Just stop. Where we go from here. You're going nowhere fast. All right? That's where you're going. Just do what you do best. Talk about basketball. Yell and scream. And, uh, and that's, that's going to be about all you're going to do. Not our emotions. After all. And this dude talking about emotions? He's the most emotional Negro on television. After all. How far has that gotten us? Well. If it hasn't gotten you anywhere, once again... Why do you keep talking about Martin Luther King if you just said that you haven't gotten anywhere? See, this is the conundrum that the black man is in. He's like a hamster on a wheel. And now they're trying to make Trump out to be Adolf Hitler. All Trump is going to do is the same thing all the previous presidents did. That being follow orders. If he doesn't follow orders, he's going to get done like how they did Kennedy and how they did Abraham Lincoln and McKinley and whoever else they either killed or tried to kill. You know, and that's and, that, and that's all that's going to go down with him. Trump is just the president. He's not anybody who is going to uh, deviate from the plan, left or right. All right. So that's it on that piece.